I don't know about you, but some nights it feels like there is something missing. I go outside and it seems to be darker than usual. Terribly dark. Why can't I see the moon? Where is it? Surely this isn't right. No human should have to go a single night without catching sight of the moon's mesmerising beauty as it acts as Earth's very own nightlight. Well, unfortunately, it happens. So why can't we see the moon every night? Where is it hiding? Let's find out. So before I reveal the answer, don't forget to hit the like button either now or at any point during the video. So why can't you see the moon every night? You may not be able to see the moon at night for three different reasons. The first is because the moon is completing its new moon phase, which involves the illuminated side of the moon facing away from Earth. This happens once a month. The second reason is that there are too many clouds in the sky blocking our view of the moon. And the third is due to your location. So there are several causes that explain why you sometimes can't see the moon at night. So let's now talk through each and every one of them. The moon goes through different phases, all of which it transitions through and completes within 29 and a half days. Now remember that fact because it's going to be useful in a moment and also later on. When the moon orbits Earth, only half of it's illuminated by the sun's rays. Hence the well-known phrase, the dark side of the moon. The new moon phase occurs month monthly at the end of the 29 and a half day cycle. It is during this phase that we cannot see the moon from Earth. But why? Well, during this phase, the moon is between the sun and the Earth, but the side that is actually illuminated is usually facing away from Earth. So instead, the darker side of the moon is facing Earth, and that dark side really is dark. So dark that we just can't see it in the night sky. And as a consequence, we are simply unable to see the moon in the sky during this moon phase. Oh, it's still up there. It's just that the illuminated side is facing away into the cosmos, whilst the dark side, which isn't reflecting any of the sun's rays, is now facing towards us. Secondly, it could be that it's too cloudy, and those clouds are simply blocking the moon from view. So you could be in the perfect location with the best telescope on the market, but if the clouds are in the sky, you're just not gonna catch a glimpse of the moon. Sure, the moon might emit a glow that is discernible behind the clouds, but you still won't be able to get a clear view until those clouds have passed. And I've just briefly touched upon it, but it can also be to your viewing location, which is of course, ultimately down to you as the observer. Because no matter whether you're using a telescope, your naked eye, or even a pair of binoculars, the location you are based will have a massive impact on, on what you can see. And during the moon cycle phases, it travels through the sky and reaches above the horizon, or at least very low in the night sky. So your position in relation to the horizon therefore matters immensely. If you're viewing in an urban area with objects blocking your view, then it's going to be difficult to see the moon above the horizon. So where should you go? Well, well, there aren't any objects or buildings that will block your view. A cast country field would be the best bet, as you can see the horizon from afar without anything impending your view. So another question you likely have is whether the moon is out every night. And in answer to that question, the moon is always out every night without fail. It's just that sometimes it might not seem like it is because we can't see it, but it is always up there. So now I'm gonna give you my best tips and suggestions when observing the moon, not only so that you see it, but you also get the best views possible. So firstly, we want to choose the right time and nighttime is a good place to start, funnily enough but it's not just the time of day. We also need to consider the time of the month because as we've alluded to so far in this video, we need to align with the moon's cycle and the moon's different phases. And certain phases are particularly good for viewing the moon because this is when you can see some of its unique details. So I'm just gonna walk you through three of the best phases to observe and when they will occur. So the first is the crescent moon and that occurs on day six after a full moon. The second is the gibbous moon, and that will occur 
uh, on day eight after a new moon. And lastly, a suggestion is to observe the waning moon, and that occurs 21 days after a new moon. Now, my next suggestion is that you choose or use the right telescope. Now, you don't need the most powerful telescope on the market, but you also don't want a kiddie telescope either. So you're going to need a telescope with reasonable high quality. And if you want to see the intricate details of the moon, then I would suggest at a minimum that you choose a telescope with an aperture of at least four inches. Better yet would be a telescope of six inches. You may also want to consider getting a moon filter and uh, these will decrease the amount of light your telescope receives from the moon, which will prevent a dazzling effect. Now, of course, you will need to use your telescope properly. A big mistake many astronomers have is that they use too high a magnification when using their telescope to observe the moon. So I would suggest that you don't exceed a magn magnification power of over 40 times the per inch of aperture. So if you look through your telescope and the image there is blurry, then you may need to reduce your magnification power. So even though the moon is out every night, and sometimes during the day as well, it's not always visible. Sometimes that's because of its own doing through its unique cycle. Other times it's to do with the weather or where we're viewing it from. But if you really want to get a great view of the moon, then be sure to invest in a good telescope and perhaps even a moon filter. Happy moon watching. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button and do consider subscribing to the channel. If you head over to the channel, you should find a playlist all about astronomy. So if you are new to the hobby or want to learn more, then I would suggest heading over there. And if you hit the bell button, then you'll be notified of when I release new videos just like this.